Hello YouTube friends. i have coming back in with the, like a fourth part of the journal making series because there's a few little questions that keep coming up in the comments and I want to ad address those with you now. Uh, I'm going to show you a few things that you can, alternatives that you can do if you don't have a sewing machine or uh, if you don't want to use the uh, string that I used. Let's get a bit. If you don't have any of this string that I've uh, I've got in these lovely colours here, or you can't get hold of any of that, I want to talk about a few things. I'd really like these journals not to be anything that you've got to go out and buy loads of things for. They should be a use what you've got lying around sort of journal. And so, if you wanted to do the spine with ribbon, this is very thin, uh, some lovely thin green ribbon. I'm going to show you how that I would suggest that you thread that so that it doesn't come undone while you're pulling away at the page at the pages. So select yourself a nice needle with a a, a decent sized eye and a blunt end like we talked about in the video. Now, if we was to, if I was to put this tape this um, ribbon through here, like like that. It's very loose on the on the needle and you might actually get quite frustrated by how that would move up and down on the needle. So there's a really super mega trick and I'm going to show it to you overhead. So from this position you can see more clearly what I'm doing. Then this, the ribbon runs through the needle quite freely and might be really really annoying. So what I want you to do then is just get a little tail of ribbon, don't need that much, about that much, let's say four or five inches maybe, and then take your needle and poke it through the ribbon so that now you've got what amounts to a little, it won't, that won't interfere with your stitching at all that'll just get uh, go through the, the holes beautifully but your uh, your ribbon won't come off the needle so that's one way of uh, using ribbon if you want to and this ribbon's really nice and strong so that would be a very good thing to use another thing we talked about using was uh, embroidery floss embroidery thread now you can get embroidery thread in all sorts of fabulous colours. So I've just chosen this one out of my uh, out of my collection over there. Let's find the end. So if we were going to use embroidery thread, someone talked about waxing the thread. Now this is a bit of an old beeswax candle that I keep for this purpose. And this is stranded embroidery thread, but I'm not going to unstrand it. I'm actually going to wax it as six strands. Now it's quite thin but it's strong and if you waxed it really well, I'm not, I'll cut the bit off that I need, I'm not binding a book with this so I'm just doing, doing this for an illustration. So if you pull that through here like so and wax it, what that means is the thread's a bit stronger but also it won't tangle anything like as badly uh, as if, uh, if you hadn't waxed it. And now we're going to thread that now, and I'm doing this through the camera, so without my glasses. Oh my word, I managed to do it first time. Again, this moves up and down the needle and might come unthreaded. So what I would suggest you do is just tie just an ordinary little single knot, like so. And then when you are using this, to bind your book that needle is not going to come off it's just so disappointing when you um, you're working really hard on your book and you find that your needles become unthreaded so that there then we've got two ways then of using ribbon or embroidery floss embroidery thread to um, to bind your book now one more person said something about uh, waxed linen thread also perfect. I haven't got any of that. There'll be some in those drawers over there probably. But that's one good way then to um, thread your needles. Someone else talked about um, not being able to make a book because they haven't got a sewing machine. Not a problem. 
first of all, you don't need to have pockets and flaps and pouches and so on. You just you don't need to have them. But if you want them and you haven't got a sewing machine, let's make one. We'll just I've got some A4 paper here. So we'll fold this in half like so. And let's say you wanted to have a pouch Let's say you wanted to have a pouch like that, so that when you're going through your book you've got a little pouch there that you can slot something inside. Now there's loads of different ways that you can uh, make that happen. One of them here, I've got a, uh, an ordinary sewing needle with some thread in it. And uh, this, I think this would look really cool. In fact, I might do this instead of machine stitching. So what we would do with this is just sit here and quite simply sew some lovely, lovely running stitches along the side of your book. I think this would look really great. No sewing machine required. And when we get to the end of this, we'll just tie a wee knot. And it's enough, it's all you need. So we'll cut that off there like so. And I think that looks fantastic. Now, for the other side, if you didn't want to sew at all even, then there's so many different types of tapes on the market now. This is washi tape, uh, and I've got quite a collection of washi tape. Uh, and so, this one is a double-sided sellotape, you could use that. And then I've just got ordinary tape here. So there's many ways we could do this. Let's use this orange washi tape here. And I'll just cut a piece of that off. I'll stick that on the side like so. Nice thing about washi tape is you can reposition it uh, if it's not exactly where you want it to be. There is an ordinary uh, little pouch there without needing to have a sewing machine at all. I think they work really well. So I think what I'm trying to say is encourage you to experiment and make this journal your own. And if there's something that you haven't quite got, use something else. Or if um, stitching this by hand is a good idea for you, do that. And so um, that's uh, just a little few extras there. Um, just to answer a few of the questions in the comments. The books are all finished now, they're here. Uh, and I've just listed them in the shop, in fact. So the ones with the velvet spines, <laughs> they're all done now. This one, the red one, this is the one we started with. Do you remember? The red and pink one. And inside here, what I did uh, in this one, there's the little front flap there. You could do all that with tape. You don't need to have a sewing machine to do that. But I, when I was binding the book, I actually tore this page just by being a bit too rough with it. Uh, there's a little tear there. So I stuck a piece of the scrap fabric, the scrap paper that was left from the front. I just stuck it in there. I think that's quite nice. So that one's done. The uh, cherries are here. I want to show you this one particularly because this is some paper that I bought from a shop in uh, um, the UK called Accessorize. It's a magic shop. It's got all sorts of fantastic papers and things in. And this is some very, very beautiful. Uh, it's sold as uh, very high-end wrapping paper. It's really lovely golden and I've teamed it with the gold. But inside here, with there's the, the little flap there. But I had some bits of the gold left, so I made some little note cards and I pop that one in the front there and then there's a couple more with a different kind of paper in the back there. So I really enjoy that. That's the kind of thing you, you, you let your imagination run riot and you can do all sorts of, um, of different things that you choose so that they look like your books, not mine. Okay then, so um, hop over to the shop if you, if you don't want to make a journal because these are all listed there now. Um, this one. Uh, I love the velvet on this one. This is velvet is I was given it some years ago and it's shot velvet which means that, I wonder if you can see, are you going to be able to see that? 
that the warp threads are a beautiful golden colour and the weft threads are this fantastic velvet. So I have a few of these are shot cotton, a shot velvet, that one's shot velvet as well. This is some fabric, this is a fabric covered journal, I made some of these as well. And this is fabric uh, I brought back from India. This is some Indian block printed fabric uh, with, um, there's a little side pouch in the, fr in the front there. Or is that the back? No, that's the front. Yeah. Yeah, just journals, great journals. Okay guys, that, I just wanted to clarify those things about the needles, about the uh, about doing the um, pockets if you haven't got a sewing machine. Um, and uh, get on and make yourself some journals. And as someone did say, they were going to make a fair few for Christmas presents. That's also a very good idea. I'm just going to leave you now with Prudence because uh, she's just uh, a sleeping in the sunshine. I'll show you. There she is. Very happily. She looks like a white cat, doesn't she, when she's like that? Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.